Hey, 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 everybody. Today I have for you podcast number 027. Today's podcast is titled, I Can't Wait to Get There. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of your weekly Limitless Life Network podcast. I am Dr. Pete Lombardi, and this is the Limitless Life Network podcast, where we flesh out the limitations that are preventing you from reaching your goals and living the life that you deserve. And today, uh, we have uh, a really cool podcast for you. And I just want to thank you all for watching or listening to this podcast. And it certainly would be of great help to have you share this with somebody that you think could benefit from listening to these podcasts. Um, we just are doing this all on our own. There's no uh, no cost to this operation whatsoever other than what we've uh, purchased as far as equipment goes. Um Anyway, just share share with some friends, uh, anybody you think that might like this podcast, if you like it. Um, also, if you ever feel like writing us a review on Apple Podcast, that certainly bumps us up in the rankings. We just really want to get this message out to as many people as possible. And if you do write a review and I see it, I will actually read it on the podcast and share it with other people. So if, you, if you're enjoying the podcast, I'd love to see a review. That would be fantastic. That would really help us out a lot. Um, so today's episode is going to be great, um, and it's a different, a little bit of a different spin. I know last week's episode we did an interview, and this week is um, is going to be a little bit different. So just trying some new things to see if we can uh, just get some more engagement and keep it fresh. Everybody likes to have uh, something that's entertaining but also helpful. So today's title is I Can't Wait to Get There. And this, I came up with uh, five talking points that I want to just share with you today. Um, but it really, it, it's, it's, this is all about uh, taking a road trip. And last weekend, uh, left uh, late evening uh, after hours and uh, started the journey in the car with my wife and two, our two youngest kids, um, headed to visit uh, our son, uh, Luke, at uh, Liberty University. So we we left the office and it was super foggy out as we were driving through the hills, but uh, we uh, we drove down to uh, to Liberty, about an eight and a half nine hour drive from from upstate New York down to Lynchburg, Virginia. And uh, if you've ever ridden in a car with some some kids uh, as a parent, then you probably can you probably have some memories. You may even have some flashbacks. <laughs> I remember as a as a kid myself traveling in the car. With my parents um, and my sister and I sitting in the back seat of a, a really interesting car, it was called a K car, and we drove to Florida uh, from New York State to Florida. It was the first trip we took as a as a family that I can remember as a kid uh, when I was about fourteen years old. And uh, this car uh, was the cheapest car I think my father could ever find because it didn't even have a radio. So imagine a a car ride to Florida in a very uncomfortable car <laughs> with no radio. And then we just happened to hit a nor'easter snowstorm, so it took an extra day to make the trip. So good times. I still remember that vividly. My sister does too. We are scarred for life from that trip. So luckily, I don't think our kids were very scarred from this, this journey down to Virginia. But um, point number one, that I want to talk about is the excitement is in the destination, but the lessons are in the journey. And the excitement, you know, when you start out on a long road trip, all you can think about is where you're going, right? You just can't wait to get there. You can't wait to see your friends. You can't wait to see your relatives. You can't wait to maybe be on vacation, and all you can really think about is getting there. And that's the carrot that just keeps you heading down the road for sure, right? But along the way, you know, you've got to do a lot of things, right? You've got to drive, and uh, you've got to 
you can look out the window. And as a kid, that's all I remember doing was looking out the window at the scenery and uh, checking out the sights. And as you know, Pennsylvania is a long state to drive through coming out of New York, heading south. And uh, I remember as a kid in the wintertime driving through Pennsylvania and seeing all the ice on the rocks. So they carved the road through some, some mountains in Pennsylvania, and it'd be a sheer wall of rock where they blasted the rock away to make the the, the road go over this mountain, and they would, all the water that would pour out of the rock would be frozen ice. And I just thought that was so cool, right, as a kid. And, you know, I, I didn't realize that that even happened because I'd never been on a road that had that. And um, the interesting thing is, like, you know, today when kids drive in a car, they oftentimes are doing what? They're looking at a tablet or they're looking at a, a phone or a screen of some sort they're watching a movie. They're being entertained within the car. And when I was a kid growing up, we were entertained with what we saw outside of the car. We played games like uh, a game where you would uh, identify cars of different colors. You would identify uh, cars with a different license plate. We just played all kinds of different mind games uh, just to to really pass the time, right? And uh, you had conversations, you drew pictures, you did whatever you could do to pass the time. And uh, and actually, back then, the speed limit was not as fast as it is today, so the trip took even longer because my father didn't drive very fast. <laughs> uh, but he enjoyed the ride, too. He actually enjoyed driving. That was one of his favorite things. And we also had this thing called a road map that my mother tried to use. Um, she was giving us, giving my dad directions, and it was it was quite a uh, a stressful time whenever we had to make a turn. It was like, is that the right road? Is that the right sign? And uh, I remember them almost getting into a fight over it. And, and today we just uh, we have a GPS, right, that just tells us turn right here, you know, and. Uh, Follow the GPS, and you have the blue line that you can see on the road, and it shows you what's coming up. And you know, there's no real mystery in it. It's uh, it's pretty interesting. And if you do make a wrong turn, it reroutes for you. But either way, there's all kinds of lessons along the way when you when you take a road trip, and uh, there's all kinds of stops that you get to make to to go to obviously go to the bathroom when you have to, and when nature calls as well as. Uh, fuel up the vehicle and uh, the sights that you get to see in different states and different towns. Uh, it's a it's a lot to take in. And, you know, but we're so excited about that destination that oftentimes we overlook some of the amazing things that we get to experience along the way. And, and it's not just in a car ride that's like that. Oftentimes in our own life, we get so fixated on where we're trying to go with our goals, with our dreams, with our hopes that we miss the beauty of the journey that's getting there. And oftentimes when you do hit a goal, you can be let down because, uh, you know, the journey was the part that was what you really enjoyed. The trip was actually what you really enjoyed. I know car rides aren't always what people really enjoy, but the, the experience and the thrill and the discovery along the way is oftentimes where the real pleasure is and, and uh, what you learn along the way. So um, don't, don't overlook the destination. Don't, don't put so much stock in the destination. Don't forget about that journey. I mean, don't overlook the journey, excuse me. Yeah. So uh, number two is uh, something totally different. And number two, what I want to talk about is staying in a hotel and how you uh, can really utilize, um, actually not lose your health in a hotel. <laughs> um, one of the, I, I've got a couple of hotel hacks, I guess I want to call this uh, point number two. Hotel hacks to help uh, your stay in a hotel be uh, better for you health-wise. And one of my number one things that I, whenever I take a road trip in a, in a vehicle is that I bring my own pillow. And my wife does the same thing. We bring our own pillow because hotel pillows, they give you a whole bunch of them, uh, but I never find them to be as comfortable as my own pillow. And a great night's sleep is super important in a hotel for me. Uh, another thing that I like to do in the hotel is when I get into the room, they usually have the room temperature way too hot for sleeping for me. Uh, so I like to turn the temperature in the room down so that I don't get really dried out because I know that the 
the heat in a lot of hotels uh, can be super, super dry. So I try to turn the heat down quite a bit uh, so the room is cool for sleeping at night. And that way, uh, when you put on that big, heavy comforter that they always have uh, on the bed, uh, you get a you get a much better night's sleep. So that's super important uh, because the next day I always like to wake up early and check out and see what kind of fitness center that they have. And uh, I usually check it out the night before uh, to see what equipment's there. And then the night before, I will mentally or even physically plan my exercise routine. Uh, nothing worse than getting down to a, a fitness room and a hotel. And one, they don't usually have a lot of equipment. Uh, they usually have just a very scant equipment, depending on what hotel you stay at. Uh, some of the more luxurious places that I've stayed at uh, have really, really nice uh, exercise facilities. And, and you really don't have to do a lot of planning uh, because they have everything available there for you. But uh, one of the places I've stayed at just recently, all they had was one treadmill, uh, one stair mass, no, one, uh, one elliptical and one bike and some, uh, they didn't have any dumbbells. They just had some uh, exercise heavy balls, the smaller ones actually. And so, you know, to go work out there, you're pretty limited with equipment, but there was floor space and uh, there was an available wall and a couple of things, another uh, traveling hack when I go on the road is I typically like to bring a jump rope and I like to bring um, some exercise bands because those easily fit in a suitcase. So between those things, I can create a workout that in a matter of 30 to 45 minutes, I can get a great workout in and uh, be ready for my day. Uh, and that's what I like to do. So hotel fitness. Section number three or point number three would be eating on the road. So if you're traveling down the highway and all of a sudden after four or five hours you're starving and you're hungry, what's available typically along highways is a bunch of fast food. And you and I well know that fast food is not really good for you. So what we like to do is to pack food that we know is healthy. That way, ahead of time, we know that we'll be able to consume the food that's good for us. So what do you pack? Well, um, I try to stay away from packing a lot of carbohydrates because that's you're not going to be moving your body very much. So you're going to be sitting in a car for a long period of time. And um, so some things that we like are almonds, um, or uh, pistachios. So nuts are uh, full of protein. They're full of healthy fat. And you can snack on them, and it's not going to be a ton of calories, but it's something that's nice as far as uh, it's not going to make you really super tired, whereas if you eat a bunch of carbohydrates, after a while, your insulin can spike, and then all of a sudden your blood sugar is high, and then you get really tired while you're, sli while you're driving and you want to fall asleep. So that's not good because then the next thing you know, you're like, oh, I need a cup of coffee. So... Um, nuts are good. Um, my wife will oftentimes actually prepare food ahead of time that we can eat along the way. Uh, I love avocado. So if she makes anything, she usually puts avocado on it. And so that, that's always really great. Uh, she may pack some, uh, some protein, uh, might be some chicken or, uh, maybe she'll make it like a salad and throw some chicken on it, which that's a little tricky to eat while you're driving, but, uh, it can be done if you're careful. And you can always uh, uh, swap out drivers. And we did that on the way home. Uh, I ate I ate while she drove. And then um, when, you know, when she wanted to eat, then I drove. So simple as that. So eating on the road, you're better off packing your own food ahead of time. And, uh, you know, I like to drink some water, oftentimes with some uh, lemon, lemon essential oil dropped in it, into it. Uh, so it's got a little flavor. Uh, that's really nice uh, just sipping on that. So that's a really good idea. Um, so eating on the road, if you, if you didn't pack anything and you were looking to get something on the road, if you have a partner with you, that's uh, your co-pilot, they can look up on the internet, they could find some healthier options so you can drive to those places. So, um, a restaurant that I oftentimes will, you know, as far as fast food goes that I, I tend to be able to pick something that's healthy for me is, uh, Chipotle. 
And uh, I know a lot of people, especially young kids, they love that restaurant. But again, you can get some good healthy protein there. Uh, you can get some greens and you can get some avocado. So healthy fats, protein, those things are not going to make you tired, uh, especially, you know, they're not really super high in uh, carbohydrates and uh, high glycemic index. So that's kind of what you want to stay away from as the high carb stuff. Uh, you could also do um, even jerky. I mean, that's like a simple protein snack. So uh, point number four is feeding your mind, not your stomach. Um, so what does this have to do with? Well, this is kind of like what I let off with as a kid. You know, we didn't really have, you know, the luxury of um, having screens in front of us, We did, which actually was kind of, to me, is it was a blessing. Uh, so we like to bring books along on a ride, too, so we can read. Uh, if you're not looking out the window and you want to pass the time. So it's a great opportunity, especially during the daylight hours. Uh, if you're traveling during the day, is uh, you can get some good reading time in. So I don't like to read the whole time, uh, especially if I'm driving. I don't like to read at all. <laughs> but if I'm the passenger, I do like to look through uh, some of my books, read maybe a, a chapter or so, uh, just because it's just nice for your mind to be able to be at peace and to, to listen to, or to read something good. Uh, and also really big on not uh, trying to bury my head in the phone. It's super easy to do on a trip, and I see a lot of people driving down the road, and I can see the the passengers are all buried, and, and you know they got their, their screens going and so forth. Uh, don't recommend that at all. Um, we're too easily entertained by that, and not to mention your brain is constantly seeing these lights, especially at nighttime and it's dark out. You know, it's time for you to go to bed as far as passengers go. So if you're looking at screens when you finally get to your destination, you're going to have a harder time falling asleep because you really haven't done anything physically. So you're not physically tired, but your mind hasn't had, your brain hasn't had that that downtime from uh, from the light. So really important to, to you know, use books and uh, look out the window, uh, play games, have some conversations with the people in the car. Um, sing some songs. That's another great thing we love to do. Is we'll we'll give the uh, you know the the phone to somebody that's playing music through the Bluetooth, and uh, they can DJ and they we pick songs and and sing sing along as we're we're driving. So that's a lot of fun too. And uh, our last point is not a tip, but it's something that I think is a super good concept, and um, and that is. You have to first leave before you can arrive somewhere new. And that's super obvious, right? Oh, if I want to go somewhere new, I got to leave where I am. So this really uh, came to me um, from the Bible. And the whole chapter, uh, second chapter of the Bible is Exodus. And, and they're leaving, the, the, all of Israel, the, the Jewish population is leaving Egypt. They're leaving Egypt to head to the promised land. And, you know, it's really hard to leave a place that you've known and you've been been used to. But if you ever want to go somewhere new, you have to leave first, right? And it's some people really struggle with this concept in their own life because we want to hang on to our old. We want to hang on to our past. We want to hang on to our familiar. But if you really want to grow... If you really want to reach a new goal, become better at something, live a life with less limitations, you have to leave. You have to be willing to leave behind that which is old, that which is familiar, that which is comfortable to strike out into something new. And you don't know what's in store along the way, and that's kind of the the surprise of heading out to a new destination. But along the way with faith and with trust, uh, you're going to get through it and you can, you'll work your way through it, right? You, you'll figure it out along the way and that's the beauty of it. That's the journey, that's the learning, and you'll gain a ton of wisdom and you will arrive at a new destination, but you have to be first willing to leave the old place that you're familiar with. So that is uh, the big thing about this uh, podcast. I can't wait to get there. Yes, I know you can't wait to get there, but you first have to leave the familiarity of the place that you've always been. So that's all we have for this week's edition of your weekly 
Limitless Life Network podcast. And again, thank you for tuning in. I want to uh, encourage you to uh, like, follow, share, all that great stuff uh, when it comes to sharing content. Um, if you want to leave us a review, uh, that would be fantastic on on Apple Podcasts. Uh, that would be great. It really kind of boost the uh, exposure of this. And I just really want to get these messages out to as many people as possible. So um, thank you very much for helping us in that mission. So tune in each and every week to stay connected, be inspired, and keep moving toward your best life by stripping away your limitations. We'll see you next week.